हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज भास्कर नापते फ्रॉम फार्मा ग्रोथ हब एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट व्हाट इज मीन बाय सॉल्वेंट इफेक्ट एंड हाउ द वायलेशन ऑफ सॉल्वेंट इफेक्ट कैन ब्रिंग द पिकटेलिंग इन केस ऑफ गैस टोमेटोग्राफी यूजिंग स्प्लिटलेस मोड आई होप यू विल फाइंड दिस वीडियो वेरी वेरी यूजफुल नाउ दिस इज एग्जाम्पल दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक एंड Sure, you will find four different pigs. The column used is DB one, and the injector mode is splitless, which is very important. Let us look at the column oven temperature program. The initial column temperature is seventy degrees Celsius for one minute, and then followed by a ramp up twenty degrees Celsius per minute till it achieves two hundred and ten degrees Celsius. Now let us look at the pick number one, which belongs to N decane. Now this pick, you can easily see that it is not a proper pick; it is completely distorted, having a lot of tailing. Now when the same standard containing these four different uh, analytes was injected by using same chromatographic condition, but just by changing the initial oven temperature to fifty degrees Celsius. Look here in the example A, you will find column initial temperature as seventy degrees Celsius, whereas in example B, it is now fifty degrees Celsius. That is the only change. Rest and other conditions are just as like example B. But you can see notably that the pick one has completely revamped, right, from the very poor pick shape to the excellent pick. With the column temperature of fifty degrees Celsius, I mean the initial column temperature of the fifty degrees Celsius. The point of discussion is going to be why this has happened. The, at seventy degrees Celsius, the peak got distorted, whereas at fifty degrees Celsius, the peak is uh, very proper, symmetric, and well accepted. let me explain you what is the primary reason for the the poor pick shape and it is because of the violation of solvent effect at 70 degree celsius now when i say this i will explain you what is mean by solvent effect i will explain you what what really happens in the splitless injection mode let us begin with what is the issue with the splitless injectors now this will not observe into a split mode but why it is really observing into the splitless injector mode and the reason is the transfer of vaporized sample into a column is very slow in splitless injector the once the sample along with the solvent get vaporized into a injector it goes transfer into a column and in case of splitless injector as there is no splitless flow because of that the flow of this vaporized cloud is very low minimum in case of the splitless injector i am talking about the flow of this vaporized cloud from injector right to the column and therefore the sample gets spread over a wide region at the front of the column and leads to broad or distorted peaks now how to avoid the peak spreading as i explained into the first question you know how the the peak the peak can get spread into a splitless mode the next obvious question is how one can avoid the spreading of the peak due to the splitless mode because sometime it is necessary to use the splitless mode and here is the answer for that by using solvent effect i will further explain what is the solvent effect and how it occurs let us first understand the solvent effect is used to focus the sample into a tight band at the front of the column the focusing of the the sample band very tightly at the very beginning of the column and that is the purpose of solvent effect the result 
This results in properly formed peaks of acceptable width and shape. Let us now understand when did solvent effect occur. The solvent effect occurs when the initial own temperature is 32 or around below that of the boiling point of sol sample solvent. I repeat, the solvent effect occurs when the initial oven temperature is 10 to 30 degrees Celsius below the boiling point of the sample solvent. So you need to keep the initial column temperature around 10 to 30 degrees Celsius below the solvent which is used for preparation of the sample. Now how solvent effect actually works or how solvent effect actually occur. Now this part of presentation is very important. So the vaporized sample and solvent enters the column. As during the injection, the injector port has the high temperature to convert your sample into a from solution to a vaporized form. So this vaporized form of your entire sample actually goes into a column. And this is the first step. Just look at the diagram over here on the right side. You will find that the green colored portion is your sample solvent into a vapor form. And you will see that there are brown colored spots. They are what? They are actually the vaporized state of your analytes. Now they are just entering into the column. The solvent condensates at the mouth of column and forms a thick film around the walls of the capillary tubing. Let us understand with the help of diagram. So whatever the solvent you have now, which is into vapor form, but as, as it reaches to the column, now the column temperature is not as good as, as of the injector temperature. The column temperature is not sufficient to get your uh, uh, solvent vaporized. It is not going to maintain the solvent into vaporized form and because of this lower column temperature, the solvent starts condensing. We are very beginning of the column, right? And it gets condensed along with the, along with your analytes and forms a thick film around the wall of the capillary tubing. You can see over here how the solvent get condensed across the wall of the capillary column. The third step, Upon subsequent heating of the column, now as you are running the uh, column oven temperature and their subsequent heating of the column is going to happen, the solvent vaporizes. The solvent undergoes vaporization and then that leaves the, the wall of the column surface. And as that leaves the wall of the, the, the capillary tubings, the analyte band gets further tightened up. And let me show you in a diagram now. Can you see over here? Now there is no solvent left over because the column temperature has risen. And because of that, your solvent got into vapor form, but leaving behind, but leaving behind the tight band of the analyte. You can see in the diagram over here. The further, this results in a narrow and very symmetrical peaks because your tight band is now going to move across the column. As it is not spread from its beginning of journey onto the column, it results into a very narrow and symmetrical peaks. And you can see in a diagram over here. Let us go back to our original question why the peak shape of peak number one is tailed or distorted in example A. And you can see in a diagram over here. Focus on peak number one. Quite distorted, having a lot of peak tailing. And here is the explanation for that. The sample solvent for the chromatogram in example A is N-hexane, which has a boiling point of 69 degrees Celsius. What is the solvent used? Now this is the solvent peak, the big peak. The flat peak is belongs to a solvent peak and the solvent used in this example is N-hexane. And what is the boiling point of N-hexane? It is 69 degrees Celsius. Now if you remember, what is the initial column temperature in this case? 
at an initial oven temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, the solvent effect does not occur and the sample is not properly focused. Now why the solvent effect will not occur in this example? I hope you remember what is the requirement to get the solvent effect occur. The initial column temperature should be 10 to 30 degrees Celsius lower than the boiling point of the solvent. Now what is the boiling point of the solvent? It is 69 degrees Celsius. So ideally the, the initial column temperature should have been around 69 minus 10 or 69 minus 30. Maybe 49 to 59 in that range the solvent effect could have occurred but at, at 70 degrees Celsius is not going to happen and that is the reason why you can see a lot of peak tailing and or distortion of the peak. So further this causes the poor shape, poor shape of the first peak. You must have the question in your mind now. The Y peak shape of the peak number 1 is symmetrical in example number 2 there. Now this is example number B. In the example number B, there is no distorted peak for the peak number 1. It's absolutely symmetrical. There is no presence of peak tailing. So why there is no peak tailing? And the answer is here now. Because the initial column temperature is now 50 degrees Celsius in the example number B. I hope you remember. When I saw the first few slides, we talked about the, the initial oven temperature of example A and example B. Example A having 70 degrees Celsius as the initial column temperature and example number B has a 50 degrees Celsius as the initial column temperature. What is the requirement to get solvent effect in a place? The initial column temperature should be around 10 to 30 degrees Celsius lower than the boiling point of the solvent used. And what is the solvent used here? Again the n hexane having the boiling point of around 69 degrees Celsius. And look here, the initial column temperature in example number B is 50, which is meeting the requirement of solvent effect. Now you may be having question into your mind, you know, why does the last three peaks in the 70 degree Celsius initial temperature program, that is figure A, are narrow and symmetric even though there is no solvent effect, even though there is a violation of the solvent effect. Isn't it? Because I we said that, okay, now the initial column temperature should be around 10 to 30 degrees Celsius lower than the boiling point of the solvent used. You will, you will have a distortion in the peak shape in case if the this law gets violated. But in the same chromatogram of example A, even though you find the peak one is distorted, unsymmetric, lot of peak tailing but then why the peak number 2, peak number 3 and peak number 4 are so symmetric and well accepted even though there is a violation of the solvent effect. The solvent effect is not needed if difference between initial column temperature and boiling point of an analyte is about 150 degrees Celsius or more than 150 degrees Celsius. Now this is another very important point. That you need not to have the solvent effect in place if the boiling point of the analyte is greater than 150 degrees Celsius from the initial column temperature. Let us now understand the boiling point of the peak number 2, 3 and the 4. So the boiling point of the peak number 2 which is N dot decay is 216 degrees Celsius. And look the difference between the initial column temperature and the boiling point of the peak number 2 and you will find it is 146 degrees Celsius. It is almost close to 150 degrees Celsius and hence there is no need of solvent effect to get the symmetric peak for the peak number 2. The boiling point of N tetra decane which is the peak number 3 is 253 degrees Celsius and if you calculate the difference between the boiling point of peak number 3 and the initial column temperature you will find it is 183 degrees Celsius which is much above the 150 degrees Celsius. And the last one is the boiling point of N hexa decane that is peak number 4 is 287 degrees Celsius with the difference of 217 degrees Celsius. 
So you can understand that there is no need to have the solvent effect in place for the symmetric peak of all these three different peaks or the components. So these three compounds are fully focused at 70 degrees Celsius because their boiling points are much greater than 156, 150 degrees Celsius above the initial column temperature. <clears throat> Let us understand the, the final conclusion now. The point number one, since the solvent effect is necessary for splitless injections, the general rule is to use an initial oven temperature about 10 to 30 degrees Celsius below the boiling point of the sample solvent. The second important conclusion is the mixed sample solvents can be a problem. That means if you are using a, a solvent which is a mixture of let us say water and DMA, the mixed solvent and if you are using the mixed solvent it can be a problem especially if their boiling points or polarities are quite different. So make sure that the solvents are of similar polarities. The third point, the mixed polarity solvents can cause pick shape problems especially if some of the analytes are substantially more soluble in one solvent than in the other. If you have a solvent which differs in polarity like let us say acid, um, let us talk about the solvent system where we are using a solvent which is non-polar like ethyl acetate and another solvent like a polar for example water. Now there is difference between the polarity of the solvent and in case if the analyte has a different solubility between these two solvents you can have a problem with the peak shape. Now when using mixed boiling point sample solvents, the initial column temperature has to be 10 to 30 degrees Celsius below the lowest boiling point solvent which is quite obvious and well understood. So the last and not the least, the splitless injections required specific temperature conditions to obtain a good result in terms of the peak shape and if these conditions are not met, poor peak shapes are often obtained. I hope you must have found this presentation a very informative and useful. Thank you so much.